They're waiting for an enemy that never comes. But these military youth are firm in their conviction that it will. Officers keep watch and maintain spirits with pep talks. We are ready, armed to the hilt. Our aim is to prevent the enemy from gaining ground. The guard must keep watch on their position. In case the enemy advances, we will fire immediately. In Harabak, defense of the region is a priority, and most of all, protecting its capital. In the hills surrounding Stepanakert, there are anti-aircraft Shulka tanks, ready to intervene if necessary. There are 40,000 inhabitants in Stepanakert, a capital that bears the scars of four years of wide-scale conflict. Today, reconstruction has already started, and there are murmurings of independence for this unrecognised republic. On official buildings, at least, some national symbols have already appeared. There's a national anthem, and the territory has even elected a president. Bako Sahakian secured 85% of votes in the first round ballot. We spoke to him in his modest office. It's a provisional space, his former campaign headquarters. Our main political aim is Karabakh's independence. And all our efforts are directed towards the full recognition of the Republic by the international community. Saturday is a day off for most military staff in Harabakh. Soldiers leave their garrison houses to meet their families. This moment away from the front line is a chance to breathe. Raya is an Azeri woman, one of the very few left in Harabakh. If one day war breaks out again, her son is likely to be sent to the front line to fight against her country, Azerbaijan. It's a weighty dilemma for this woman, who is now completely integrated in Harabakh society. I don't see myself live without Karabakh. Of course, I have some problems, in particular, to see my family in Azerbaijan, to see my parents crave, to see my relatives. I miss them a lot. But this is my destiny. How can I fight against that? Now it is difficult to meet each other. In Shushi, Sunday is Mass Day for the Christian Apostolics. This was a Muslim stronghold during the war, and Azeris used the Holy Saviour Church as a weapons warehouse. Shushi was a Muslim stronghold during the war. The Holy Saviour Church was used as a weapon warehouse by the Aziris. Mass is carried out in an old Armenian language called Kerapa. It's now only spoken in churches. Few people still attend Mass. Their attention is elsewhere. People here lost everything on a human and spiritual level. Their motherlands remain, but everything has to be reconstructed. Their economic and social situation is their priority. Karabakh's situation remains up in the air. It's neither at peace nor at war. After the failure of negotiations in June, the population's hope is hanging on the upcoming meeting in autumn between the Armenian and Azeri president. They hope to resolve a conflict that's already lasted 13 years and eventually to mourn its 30,000 victims. And Ashwin Alaverdian, one of the reporters on that story, joins us now for comment. Ashwin, at this meeting uh, to be held in the fall, what are the chances that the stalemate will actually be resolved? Well, the chances are, are slight because um, there, was a, there were negotiations already in June. Um, they didn't lead to any substantial agreement. 
Um, also, most diplomats um, agree on the fact that as there are upcoming elections, both in Armenia and in Azerbaijan in 2008, um, the, both presidents and both ministers of foreign affairs are not ready to make substantial concessions mm. right now. But how long can Nagorno-Karabakh continue with this de facto state status? Can this go on indefinitely? Well, um, Nagorno-Karabakh goes on and life goes on there, mm. um, mostly um, because Armenia helps as well and the Armenian diaspora and also uh, one must acknowledge that um, the economy is also developing there um, but indeed um, there is no stages for this territory um, like in other places like mm -hmm. Kosovo um, but this lack of international stages is obviously a, a big problem. This could take a long time. Do you think war could break out again? Um, no. I, well, I don't know, but um, I think that both parties um, are ready. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people, at least, we met the people, and people um, want. So the militaries are preparing, but the people don't want it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Meanwhile, how do those people, the, the ordinary civilians of Karabakh, go on with their daily lives? Well, as I said, life goes on in Karabakh. Um, People are not thinking about war all the time. They're kind of confident for their future and so on. But still, you can notice uh, and you can feel war in the streets. Mm -hmm. There are military people everywhere. And, uh, and also, as you might have uh, noticed in the report, um, the authorities are quite vigilant on right. who is entering the territory and, and so on. Okay, Ashwin Alaverdi, and unfortunately that's all the time we have, so thanks so much for joining us. That is all for this edition of Reporters. Remember, if you'd like more information on our program, you can always log on to our website. That's at France24.com. Click on Special Reports. Until next week, then, I'm Andrea Sankey. Thanks for joining us.